what are your thoughts around security issues with ChatGPT where users can see each other's chats? That shouldn't happen, but it does sometimes. In the first version, they actually had it set that way by default because they wanted other people to see each other's chats because it was in beta. And again, if you're getting something free, who's the product? You are. And so by being able to share other people's prompts, I actually like that because it gives me an idea of other things I can do. And in fact, there's actually a course on Udemy right now and I'm having the guy on my podcast. If you don't follow me on yourcyberpath.com and the Your Cyberpath podcast, highly recommend it. Comes out every other week. We cover lots of great topics. And one of the ones coming up that we're filming, I think next week or the week after, is on ChatGPT. And this person actually created a course. I think his name is Alex, if I remember correctly. I'm, I'm digging in my brain and it's late here, so I'm forgetting it. But he'll be on the episode coming up in the next couple of weeks. But he has a course on ChatGPT. It's about three to four hours on Udemy. And the whole thing is going through how do you use ChatGPT like I did at the beginning of the stream. And in it, he actually gives you a list of 500 prompts that he uses. And so if you're a marketer, here's some prompts you should use. If you're studying for a certification, here's some prompts you should use. If you're trying to get a job, here's some prompts you should use. And that prompt engineering is really the crux of ChatGPT. And the better you get at prompt engineering, the better you're going to be able to do it. So for me, I'm okay with them sharing my prompts because I'm not asking anything personal uh, of ChatGPT. And I think if you're aware of that and you don't share personal information, it's fine. Everything in generalities. And then I can tell you with ChatGPT, if you pay for the API access and you build your own connection to it, it doesn't do that either. And so I personally, for my team, have paid for API access and we built that into our system. So in our Slack, if Demario wants to ask a question, he can just go into our Slack channel. It's called ChatGPT and he can have a conversation with it over the API and nobody else sees what we're doing because that's all being protected based on the paid plan that we're on. That's my thoughts around it as far as when other people can see each other's chats. I think it's just like Facebook. And it's just other people can see your chats on Google. Google puts out a list once a year that says, hey, here's the most 100 most common questions asked on Google. There's a lot of stuff we can see, even as marketers and ad folks. If I go into my Google ad console, I can see what people are asking for. And then I can make YouTube videos based on that because I now see what people are asking. So again, if you're not paying for it, you're probably the product. And I think that goes here as well. Do you have any thoughts on security in ChatGPT, Mario? <sighs> Again, with it being so prolific, I think it's always good and bad, right? Because when you have any type of open knowledge, open sharing can enhance a lot of things, right? So that's why open AI is kind of part of the, the name of the company to freely distribute these things. I think someone was talking about, I forgot the creator of, it's not Dolly, but it's it's a fusion, it's just one of the diffusers and the, it's not important, but the person, they said, we need to give AI out as fast as possible but before it becomes asymmetric and we have a group of elites group of people with the money to be able to take and have this information in this this tool and pretty much monopolize on it so again i think it like you were saying it's all about if you're being private or not with the information because we share the truth is we share anything we share our location we post on instagram oh, i'm here i'm there we want people to know where we are i think we're getting it privacy is something that's getting harder and harder to come by that's, that, and that's just the truth now again long as i think the truth is everything gives the disclosures right we don't read them i didn't even know that there's mics on some of the tvs there's some cameras they're listening to you even mm -hmm. facebook they tell you if you read some of the fine print they will turn on your mic every now and then and listen to your conversations you said yes but you didn't know you said yes because we all scroll down and click i agree i see that with my wife all the time because we'll be talking about something and about two hours later she's scrolling facebook and there's an ad for whatever the thing was we were talking about so i'll be like honey i'm thinking maybe we should go on an ncl cruise in july what do you think and she's like i don't know maybe we'll go royal caribbean and then two hours later all of a sudden royal caribbean's blasting us on facebook and chasing us around the internet because they heard oh you're interested in royal caribbean okay let's let's advertise to you yeah. because again we're the product on facebook right <laughs> Yep. So again, this is, it, it goes both ways. The truth is, I think it's going to be hard to get around it. And I don't think a lot of people, I don't personally know this is just my own anecdotal evidence. When I created my first app, I didn't realize I created a chat app and I was like, hold on, I can see what people are saying. <laughs> a private message from one person to the other. I can read everything someone's saying. You don't think about the person on the other end looking at what's going on. I'm like, oh man, I don't, this don't feel right that I can see this. I never thought about it when I was creating it. And then I started thinking, hold on. If I can see theirs, Facebook Messenger or SMS, we I know they get subpoenaed and they reveal SMS messages, but I never really thought about it to that indefinite. And that's why I never really understood the big thing about WhatsApp initially. I know it has a lot to do with international, but they're big on end-to-end -end encryption. So not even they can see what's going on. So I think it's okay, if, but I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know about those things until I saw it because I created a, 
not as private type of application and it revealed those type of flaws. When it comes to privacy, right, there's a lot of ways that we talk about doing that. VPNs and encryption, packet-based encryption, message-based encryption, all that kind of stuff, right? But even at the end of the day, I will tell you that if people want to spend enough time to figure out who you are, they can. Yeah, yeah. Really hard to stay off the grid if you're ever going to be connected to the internet, right? We're just, connected. Just, I can fingerprint you based on your device, your browser. Even if you do a lot of different stuff to try to obfuscate yourself, we can still dig through those layers and figure it out if we want to. It's just how hard do we want to make it for ourselves, right? And doing something's better than doing nothing. I will tell you, the other course I've been working on recently is one with my, my partner, Kip Boyle from Your Cyberpath, and it's the LPI Security Essentials course. And that one should be out in the next two or three weeks or so, just like the security of the cloud essentials is coming out with Jamario in the next week or two. Right after that, we're going to be coming out with the security essentials course, which is an LPI certification. And in that certification, we actually talk a lot about privacy and anonymization because Linux and open source users are very interested in that. So we talk all about VPNs and Tor and deep web and how you can do fingerprinting based on your browser and cookies and active sessions and all that kind of stuff.